Welcome, boys. Y'all said you wanted a little of this action. Now, here you are. You're going you're gonna to get it. You're going to run a little corn mash, mash we built. We're going to see who's got the best skills to change that flavor profile with that copper steel. Timmy, got any words for him? You got three steels here. They're all built the same. All of you got the same mash bill. So how do you feel your steel? How do you feel your doubler? How you run your heat? How you make your cuts? Here's hearts and tails. One good jaw sitting on the table. That's what's going to make the difference in y'all three. I know that yens are each very capable of making outstanding liquor. All righty, fellas, you've got four hours starting now. Good luck, y'all. For the first time in these shiners' careers, they'll run a mystery mash on stills they haven't built to produce their best jar of clear corn shine at a minimum of 100 proof. Does it have solids in it, Digger? I think it's yes. mostly strained off, but it don't hurt to double strain it. Chew, got dog, I smell the alcohol in there. She's in there. Take you two hours to strain that. Yeah, it's taking a little while for sure. You ain't gonna strain that, not that. I can run it without the corking together. I know you can. He said, I poured solids and all in there to hell with it. That's what he said. He's catching most of the solids in the bucket, though. He's doing it right. When I get in the kitchen, I make a lot of rackets all I can pee. I'm sweating, perspiring. This is a hell of a lot different than running shine in the backwoods. You can't take a heat and get out of the kitchen. That's exactly right. That's high quality H2O. You put water in yours? Just a little. About a gallon. Now, that's a good strategy, because his mash had a lot of solids in it. So he's adding some water to it to thin it up a little bit. That's the idea, put a little bit of water in it. Now you're cooking with smoke, or gas in this case. Now, my valves will work. I live on the mountains all my life, you know, but I hardly ever use propane. I have some, but I use wood the way I run. Sometimes you just got to finesse it a little bit, Marky. Watch this. Well, you got gas now. It ain't a work. I need a flak vest on here in a minute. Fire now. I hear it. I hear Turn it. Turn it off. Water. Turn it off. Turn it off. I can't. Yeah, I'll blow us up. Now you won't give me a I ain't scared of it. Now we're cooking. What'd you do? Uh, aggravated my hernia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Josh got his thumping over here and he ain't got the cap on it yet. Better not quit stirring or she'll be stuck and your pot will be ruined and your run will be ruined. Well, I'm gonna tell you, that'll heat you up faster. And you better get him some fire going. Yep. You gotta adjust your air, Daniel. Yeah, now you're looking good. Oh, I'm running liquor on the floor. How'd you do that? Are you cheating? Nope. How'd he do that? <laughs> Mine was hotter before his. Josh is actually the wild card. He's gung-ho. He wants to do it right now. And if he don't watch real close, he'll make some mistakes because he's doing stuff too fast. Let's see if it's scorched or not. Whew. It's hotter than Hades. I just speed it out. That sure is good and clear. That's about 180 proof. There ain't nobody here tough enough to swallow that. Woo! Uh, can I have my tongue back? Just remember, boys, we're just looking for the best jar, not a whole bunch of them. 10 minutes, fellas. Where you think you at? Between 110 and 120 something. I like my drinking liquor about 90, 95. Really? What about you, Daniel? Looks pretty clear from here. I got one jar I'm gonna give you anyway. It's all we need, Mark. So, Mr. Daniel. Big D. And I don't mean Dallas. Best I can make with what I had to work with. OK. You head on up to that cabin. We yeah. get our decision made. We'll come get you. Here comes Mark. Bring that jar in here, Marky. Oh, yeah, a jar of liquor is all I can eat. Outstanding. That's what <laughs> we're looking for, brother. Corn liquor. I just brought you a good clear jar of liquor. I, didn't, I ain't proof to nothing. There's something like this. What I got to work with is the only one, one way I can do it. All right, thank you, buddy. All right, buddy. This 
just straight liquor. Looks like you've been sampling the right smart. We've been hitting her pretty hard. I didn't want to overthink this, but I do want to win, and I do want that popcorn sutton jar of moonshine really bad. Head on up there to the cabin with the rest of them boys. OK. Good luck, brother. All right, guys. Time to get drinking a little liquor. Start with Josh? Yep. yep. Josh is, might have the clearest jar up. I think he does. I think so, too, yep. Which that could be good and bad. That could be high proof. His proof's up there pretty high. He might have been running it maybe a little too fast. I done hit my jar so many times, by the time it was time to turn a jar in, I couldn't tell what it tasted like no more. <laughs> <laughs> Smells good. Oh, yeah, it's a good smell. Not really that high. Might be 105, 110. Definitely smooth. That's a damn fine drink of liquor. Daniel Manor. Daniel's not as clear as Josh. He is not. All right, Mr. Daniel. It's got a different smell to it. It ain't got a whole lot of smell at all in the towel. There's alcohol in there, but it's kind of falling flat on proof a little bit. He may have added a little bit of water to it. It flattened it out a little bit. They're both a good drink. It's a good drink, it just a little cloudy. All right, let's try Mr. Rogers. All right. Ah. Mm, nice proof. He's got the best bead of the three. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's nice proof. 95 to 100, right on it. There's where Scorch is at. You can get it right off the hit. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I ain't used to even tasting that. Can't get it past the nose, it ain't going on the lips. That stuff right there hurts you. Mm -mm. Oh. Don't even go there. Tastes a little bit like a charcoal brick head. Yeah. He's scorched the piss out of it. I'm going to hand my job off to Tim Smith because I said, you're all my friends and I love you. But he said, I'll cut anybody's head off. <laughs> Josh, you're the number one man standing in front. Danny, you're number two. Mark, you're number three. You still in the game. Ain't nobody going home on this one, or any of these for this matter. All you're getting right here is a trip to the fruit stand first and foremost to make you have your apple pie. Well, you forgot the jar. I ain't telling you. Shh, adults are talking right now. <laughs> Let go. <laughs> you might want to walk. Y'all tell me. Yeah. Guess what? What's that? We got three young gentlemen here. I need to go to the fruit stand. Yeah. The farmer's he... market. Is he driving? He's driving. Oh, yeah, hell. yeah. All right, fellas. Well, look, y'all come on with me, and we'll get you what you need. Thank you, gentlemen. See you in the next round. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now, that's a damn trio of <laughs> misfit children. I bet they don't make it back today. Oh, no.